Welcome to day 469, making Songbringer. This is the third installment in making procedural audio. Procedural, just procedural melodies so far. So as you can see, I'm, I finally got these, um, the existing audio for the game converted into a procedural format. So as I walk into this next room here, it changes its, not its root key, but it is changing the notes that it's playing and its melody. This is uh, this particular track here that it's playing is one of the simplest tracks in the entire game. It's only got two notes in it. This goes woo, woo. You know, it's got two, just two notes. It just cycles back and forth. It's kind of a really boring, slow tone. Probably will liven this up a lot, uh, hopefully today. Uh, but anyways, um, it's pretty neat, right? You can go into the next room, change its notes, but there's a little problem with it right now where it's not looping correctly. So, we'll work on that first. What's up, Sour Dongs? You are first, my man. I think what the problem is, is that it uses these um, nested events. So there's a, an event called level one, and then there's this event called base zero, which it uh, selects one one of these base sequences based on your random one variable. Yeah, it's much more songbringery now, right? Yeah, so there's a problem in here. I think what the problem is is that it's I didn't have a tempo set for the sub events, so I'm. I'm trying to go put tempos in the sub events, and then also while I'm here, I notice there's a couple events that got clipped off too short. So I'll fix that too. And I think there these all need to end at right at bar 17. There you go. I'm sorry. So first off, I'll fix these loops. What's this? Um, this is base zero C. Man, one thing that would really, really help this is if I could find some way to like automate exporting all this, because this is this is a lot of work to go export just a single note, just a single line of bass takes forever because you got to go export all of them 12 times. What's up, Boger Shud? So this is B, it just needs to be a C. And this one needs to be a C as well. And we got to get these soloed right. Good, and I'm just making sure they're in harmony. The right notes, and I can export this now. And okay, I'm fixing zero C. If my studio doesn't have a command line version, no, definitely not. Yeah, it's just it's F Mod Studio is just the the UI for F Mod, and then. FMOD um, low level is the API that you use in your in your code, basically. Batch exporting? No, it's not. It's not batch exporting from FMOD Studio. It's batch exporting that I would want from Ableton, so I could like batch export a whole bunch of things for a bunch of different notes. I could probably write a script for this. I could probably get Hammerspoon to do this somehow. I can probably figure this out because hammer spoon is pretty powerful. Um, but anyways, it's only it only took like 45 minutes to export like 24 different tracks or whatever. And there's probably going to be 48 tracks by the time it's done with just for level one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just yeah, Ableton is where I'd want that feature. But Ableton does have a thing where you can freeze all your tracks. But in this particular instance, I have two different tracks which have different notes they're playing, so I can't put them on one track with a group. You can do this thing in Ableton where you can group a bunch of effects together and then you can kind of layer them into two different groups so I can take the same notes and play them with two whole different instrument racks, basically. 
but that would mean that I would have to have exactly the same notes. And as you see, these two tracks that I'm exporting right here have different notes. And if I were to go change these notes and make it simpler and stuff like that, it would change the character of this song that I'm trying to that I wrote before. So I don't want to change the character of the song. So, anyways, there's, there'll be they'll I'll find some way to make this all more feasible and quick, rapid to be able to make procedurally generated songs or melodies like this. But for now, I'm just kind of doing it the hard way, just exporting each track. So let's see if um, I can drag this now. Yeah. Uh, what? That's not right. Okay, so fmod is not, it doesn't have the right. These aren't reloaded yet. So maybe I need to restart fmod studio. So it looks like I need to export again zero D sharp as well. What's up, Momir? All right, so D sharp. Make sure these are in tune. Yep. Okay, so you re-export D sharp. And I think what I gotta do is restart FMOD Studio to get it to recognize this. So hopefully that's all that needs to be done. Yeah, save it. Okay, let's see if that worked. Just learning the ins and outs of all this. It takes a minute. Okay, let's see if base zero. Oh, it does look like it did something. What the hell? What? It's like it changed the tempo. So it's modified, modified, that's good. What's up with you? Why are you like this now? It's totally the waveform display. It's it totally played. Oh, okay. It's kind of weird. To say the least. Oh man. It's trying to loop this now. Uh, what's up, Mr. Milf Hunter? Nice name, man. I'm making procedurally generated melodies. So I'm trying to fix up uh, this first FMOD project I made. Well, this is the second FMOD project, whatever. The last two days I did like a proof of concept. Listen to the tones. Right, it's only, it's only playing two notes there. And then if I go into this next room, it'll change the notes. Ah, uh, it changed in the middle there. Another bug I gotta fix here. But anyways, every single one of these rooms plays a different um, few notes, but they're all in the same key. So anyways, and, and then eventually it'll be cool, like when you're fighting enemies, there'll be drums and stuff that fade in and all that. You tried Xcode 8? Oh, 
Oh no. Oh, okay. Well, dang, that sucks. Okay, why, 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 why? Do I just gotta recreate this? Let's just kill these. Deleted. Start over. The zero C. Damn it! It's still small. I hate you right now, FMOD Studio. Try and fix something and it breaks. Maybe it has something to do with this tempo. All right, all right, all right. This is my f this is my first week using FMOD Studio, so I'm just trying to figure it all out. But so far, I'm really impressed with how awesome FMOD is. God damn it! What the hell is wrong with this? It keeps on. Uh, is this really a different size? It's not a different size. It can't be. Wave snow. Where was this? F mod assets. All right. So C sharp. I haven't changed. Fifty seven seconds. C. I have changed. It's also fifty seven goddamn seconds. What if I recreate this track? <laughs> I'm talking about how awesome FMOD is, and now I'm like getting into some of the most annoying problems so far. Oh. Ah. Why wouldn't it line up? This is so, God, so frustrating. So I do not want to go have to recreate all these. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? You learn with me? What are you learning right now? Okay, I've, st I've restarted FMOD like a billion times. This isn't helping. I really don't want to recreate all these. What if I, can I duplicate a track? Oh man, that might work. I could duplicate a track or create another track, duplicate that. How to fix problems, or at least try to. I'm at least trying to fix it. Come on, gods of procedurally generated music, help me. Help me out. Okay, I'm gonna try and copy a different note. How to be relaxed when problems appear. And I'm just gonna drag in Oh my god! I dragged in the new sound and it's 
Да. What the fuck? <sighs> Everything was going so well until this. What else could I try? Maybe it has something to do with tempo. Okay, that looks a lot different. Now it's a, now it's at 17 bars. <laughs> Where? I'm just trying to get these to be the same length. They're the exact same length, right? Both of these are 57 seconds long, C sharp and C. But when I drag it in, when I try and create a new one here in, in F mod, it thinks it's this, new, watch this. No matter what I do, it creates this tiny, small little thing. I try and drag it out it starts to loop it see that little, this is a little loop point I don't want either of those things that'll mess up the audio in the game nice Mr. Millfunner So lame. All right, what about base one? Is base one all right? Damn, base one has the same problems. Ah, oh, it's pissing me off. I think I have to recreate all this. God damn it. Ugh. Oh. Ah, right. Let's create it again. This makes me angry. All right, well, maybe it had something to do last time with, I never had a tempo here. That might've been important. So I gotta create a parameter ran one for this one, zero to 11, not 111, just 11. All right, 
I gotta go redrag all this in and reset up all the freaking random numbers. If this even works. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Zero A, A sharp, B, C. Oh, oh my God. They did it again. All right, it's time to get technical with this. I'm gonna actually start hacking into the, the project files, figure out what's wrong. It's obviously something wrong with it. Maybe it's cached. Maybe it cached some information or something. When was the last time I checked in? got to be some kind of cached information because uh, otherwise why when I, when I go and recreate a brand new event does it still mess up Thanks, Mill Funner. Cheers, man. Okay, if I save there, what do my files look like now? It's got only two events that it tried to change, and they're these two events. I bet these have something to do with it. This is base zero, right? Mixer, master, group tracks. Timeline, parameters, master bus. Oh my God. Single sound. Length, 56.94, here we go. Something, 56.94. Let's kill this. Wait a minute, maybe I should put this back in. Wait. 
Is it? Um, this sucks. I have to do this. Ah, I gotta work on my attitude, man. Gotta work on my attitude. It's gotta be here in its metadata for maybe its assets. What's this? It's just the asset folder metadata. Audio file. There we go. So what's it called? What's this file called again? L1 base 0 C. There it is. And it's giving it a freaking length of 48.32 and it hasn't updated it. Doesn't look like. So where is this? What folder is this? Audio file 63 ADD. Okay, so 63. There's the one we're looking at right here. That one's 48.32 seconds. This one's 56.94. There's the problem. It did not update that file. Holy hell, I hope I hope I just I hope this is it. Yeah, the last time it updated 63 ADDD was at 11.49 a.m. FMOD did not update this file. Oh, man. I want to punch FMOD in the face right now. <laughs> there needs to be a uh, FMOD punching bag. The other file, I think it was D sharp, which also has the wrong length. Okay, so I just updated those two XML files. Let's keep that open actually. There we go. Okay, I just fixed those. Let's see what we got. If we reopen it, FMOD again. I take it back. I take everything back I said that was positive about FMOD. <laughs> I lost my cool a while ago. Definitely. Alright, so if I redrag this in, holy shit, it worked. Oh my God. All right. Okay, for anybody, anybody out there that's using FMOD Studio version 0 0.8.14, there you go. If you update one of your asset, full, uh, asset files and it becomes a different length, FMOD won't even update it. So you have to go manually update the XML file to give it the right length if you want your track to play correctly. When Xcode was repeating and crashing, oh my god. I, I, I tried to reinstall Visual Studio three nights in a row now. No luck. Every time I reinstall it, it's still got the same bug. But finally I found, I found the answer online on Stack Overflow. So it's, I think maybe tomorrow night I'll try and reinstall Visual Studio again. And hopefully it'll work. All right, so we got this should be this is here C. Okay, so B was one point nine two point one. C. Uh, two point nine to three point one. Ah. 
I know, man. It pisses me off sometimes, software. It's like the people. I just. Ah. Uh, I know. I mean, I write bad software sometimes too, so I can't. No, everybody's to blame, but it's like. I, sometimes I just wish people would put more quality into their products. Because big programmer teams suck. It's it's true, right? It the, when you get a, the bigger your programmer team, the more you can. No one's responsible. You know, it's like oh, oh, we're all since we're all responsible. Nobody really does anything about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, there, we have everything with the right note length now. In this event, I think what the problem was before was that it didn't have a tempo. Base one is still all messed up, so I gotta recreate all that. Wait, maybe not, maybe not. Yeah, I didn't have to. Sweet. Yeah, and it's hard to communicate. Yeah. It looks like we have some problems with these, too. Well, luckily, I know how to fix this this time. Unless, oh, that one's OK. Is this one OK? No, this one's broken. Okay, we only have one broken one in this one at least. What's up, Wissa? So another aspect, so many modern programming paradigms are designed to accommodate the lowest common denominator of programmers. I know. That's a that's a big thing these days too, right? Is like you don't have to be as good of a programmer anymore to be like to be an official software developer because tools are so much easier you know you got uh, tools make everything so, a lot more accessible like all of our ID IDEs today are debuggers everything is so much better than it was 20 years ago that as a programmer you can end up being more lazy about things which kinda sucks What's up, Rocket Bunny? How's it going, man? Sorry, I'm just recovering here. I had a little breakdown moment. All right, 1B. Okay, 1B has to be re-exported, so which means I have to go delete this, close FMOD Studio. I need to re-export 1B. Let's get that to be the right length. Got these two notes. B. This one's a B. notes are in harmony. Oops. All right, let's re-export this. L1 base 1B replace. All right. Convenience to safety nets can be very useful. True. Yeah. Yeah. Too much of an over reliance. Okay. There, we got 1B re-exported. Now I gotta go fix the XML data. Because FMOD sucks if you re-export a file. There's 1B, let me get the co corresponding one open, something like 1C so I can see how long it's supposed to be. So 1C is 50.04 blah 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 seconds long. 1B should be that long, but FMOD won't fix it. So let's just 
manually freaking fix it. Is it a bad thing to have C++ convert ints to floats and floats to ints automatically, or is it better to practice for me to convert it myself? I think you already know the answer to that. The way you ask that, I think you have a good feeling for what is right there. Sixty-nine point five four. All right, let's drag in asset one B. Good. Oh, let's just say it's a right leg. Oh, God, man, that was freaking me out there for a minute. What should this be? This one is 0.9 to 1.1, so this one should be 1.9 to 2.1. This one should be 2.9, all right, cool. We got this all set up again. This should be okay now. We should be able to loop this, and it should be sound fighting. Sounding fine. It's gonna be the exact same note twice, though. notes. loop at the end correctly. Maybe, does this thing need its own? Hold on a second, I really want to check this in so far because that was so freaky. I don't want to ever re-experience that again. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try two different techniques to get this to loop correctly. First of all, I'm going to add a loop region to this sub event. Second of all, if that doesn't work, I'm going to try just cutting off these last little bits of this, which I don't necessarily want to do. Okay, let's do it. Add a loop region. We'll add one to this thing too. And let's see if that now works for the main event. The main event! Sucky way to have to like check something because it's listening this whole track again. But I haven't found a better way to do it because it isn't looping correctly, so it's the problem of starting it correctly and all that. Gotta 
loose of the whole thing every time. Personally, I just I I feel like it's better to be explicit about it all the time. So I always type 0.0f. Well, I've gotten late. Yes, it worked. Oh, it finally worked. I've gotten lazier about it these days, but in general, I think it's better. Okay. Let's try this out in the game now. I just want to hear it loop successfully to get to the end of its track and loop back and play it again nicely. All right, we got some nicer, higher tones for this one. That's a weird combo. Because this is the key of B, which is kind of a flat key. There's some, it's, well, it's C flat, I guess. It actually transitioned correctly that time. Nice. This is a really minor key. Just gives it that really almost melancholy tone. Yeah, it was a weird combo, right? At first I was like, is that right? But it, it is. It's looping. Cha, oh, this is great. It's finally looping correctly. Yeah, minor keys are great for dungeons. Major keys are a little better for the overworld. This one's a lot happier, that first note. See, let's see if it would, it would sound like if it were all in the key of C, which is really, it's got like one of the happiest keys there is. K note C. All right, so that's gonna put every single one of these tracks, or yeah, <laughs> every single one of these little mini ambiences or whatever into the, the key of C. There'll be a bunch of different random notes in C that it chooses for each one of these melodies. Melodies, it's only two notes and I'm calling it a melody, but I guess it is a melody. Is it? What is it technically a melody? See, immediately it's way more happy. Oh, that note wasn't. It kind of was, but. We've got A, C, and D here. Huh. These are F and A. F. Now let's see. 
Okay, cool. Let's go back and um, keep it whatever key it was. And let's add some other elements from these other tracks now. So that fixed you. So let's check in. Okay, there's a lot of little fun, happy noises that go into these, this track once you get into higher indices. So let's go to another index. GCC. This is what these happier tones will sound like. It's kind of Metroid-y. The first thing I want to identify with these tracks here, we want to make sure that the sub or the bass tones are basically the same as the other ones. I think they are. Yeah, this is exactly the same notes. I even A D A D A D A D. Yep, these are all A and D. Even that one. Oh yeah, yeah. It's exactly the same pattern as before. Okay, so that's fine. It's good. That means all we need to do is copy this weird little bleep 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 bleep. This is, this is a negative 14 volume. Wait, wait, is it? Negative 12 it gets to. I want to copy this over to the track I'm using. Yeah, I use GCC on Linux. Um, I use GCC, GDB on Linux. Um, on Mac, I'm using Xcode and Clang, of course. And on Windows, I'm using Visual Studio and MSVC. So that's three different compilers I'm using all on each platform. Um, really, I probably should, in, in the future, I should probably convert to actually using Clang on every platform. I probably will. Or maybe I won't. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of interesting to have three different compilers compiling the same game. So I can find problems that I wouldn't have ever found without having a different uh, compiler. You know, I'll notice that everything works fine in Xcode and GCC, and then when I go compile it on Visual Studio, it's got some weird bugs and other random stuff happening and then I figure out why and I can understand like oh that's that's how their compiler works and I can make the game kind of more bulletproof so I don't know I think it's kind of good for making your game really really strong and like that but 
In the future, I think it'd just be easier on me if I just went with Clang and CMake. You know, it'd be so much easier. If I was like the ideal programmer of my, my, own, my own ideal in my own mind, I would be um, coding in Vim and using CMake. Clang's pretty badass. I love Clang. They've always been cutting edge. They're the ones that started modules, you know? So I'm copy and pasting this little blee blue, what should that be called? It's like a little chirpy thing. I'm gonna copy the pattern. You ever try Clang? I don't know, I'm not sure what Clang would be like from a command line perspective, because I've only used it with Xcode. But if you're using CMake, it's not too hard to switch to Clang, you know? Do you use uh, do you use GCC like just from the command line or how do you do it? Really? Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so I want this to be twelve dB. Change this. Seems pretty loud. Oh, that's because this is the export. Oh, and it's just super loud. It needs to be negative 12. There we go. Oh, both command line or code blocks. What's code blocks? Is that ID? Sweet. I hadn't heard about code blocks before. This is cool. Cause I had I was like, I was looking for a good one for Linux. And I found like sea lion and all that, but I should get this because I've just been coding in Vim and on the command line, which is you know it's great because it gets you to gets you to be pretty strong with all that. But okay, so chirpy chirpy is gonna have two two different modes or two different copies of itself here. So let's duplicate this. We got chirpy like one and chirpy two. Kdevelop? Oh, I hadn't heard about Kdevelop. Yeah, you can comment Valtteri. Codeblox is smaller. Oh, I always respect a good application that's smaller. I love it when they do stuff like that. No bloat. Kdevelop, cool. This looks pretty good. Nice. Pop-ups and everything. Oh, cool. You got this whole like view like that too. Sweet. I'll remember that. I'll remember that. I need to get a really good, a better setup with Linux. Okay, so this is going to be node, which is D. This should probably be A. Yeah. All right. So get rid of those two notes. 
that's going to be our D, and this one's going to be the A. And then we want to export them both as being A. That's A sharp. A. This one should be A and A. A, A. It's like going and it's choosing notes randomly, but they're all from the key of D. But I don't want that because this is going to be a procedurally generated melody based on a root key I give it in the game. So, uh, what should I do? What happens if I completely take away Rand? Rand. Oh wait, no. Oh, I just take away the scale. Wait a minute, is that working? Let's focus on one of these notes. I want to make sure this note is always like an A. It's it'd be fine if it's a it's a A3 or an A4, but as long as it's just they're all A's. Yeah, I think that was an A. Wait, no, that wasn't an A. your note for you what note it's actually see it's going plus or minus which means well I guess one way to do this is just to let it run like that just let it rip See what see what happens. See if this works. I would have to re-export this like a bajillion different times again if it doesn't work, but let's see the it feels right. It feels okay. We're gonna let this rip. So I've got Chirpy, the first track. Both of these are random, so I think they're just adding scales. I don't know, it might be doing different notes too. So, okay, first time we're doing Chirpy, the first one. Oh, wait, I only have to export this. Twelve times. I thought I'd have to export this 24 times, but no. I can just select that this time. Oh, this is an easier one to export. All right, so we got L1 Chirpy. Chirpy 0A. It's going to take a minute here. We 
got 12 of these to export. A sharp. B What? That exported way too fast. B. One thing I should do this time is once all these are exported, I should make sure they're all exactly the same file size because that'll let me know that one of them is perhaps shorter than the other. I won't get into that problem again with FMOD not updating itself. So, there's that. C. Oops. This is the part I wish I could automate somehow. I think I could figure out some way to do this, maybe. Automate exporting all these notes. I guess I could save each individual note as a separate Ableton project and then write a script in Hammerspoon that goes and loads each project, re-exports it, could work. Anyways, automating this would be so nice. Cuz this is uh this is my first day doing this, right? This is <laughs> this is the tough part about making procedurally generated audio is you got to like have a 12 different tracks for each little you know, 12 different exports for each one track basically. The difference between a string and a thread? You mean just threads? Could you not compute the notes from the others? Oh, Momir, yeah, yeah, that would be possible, but um, the way that the way that works in FMOD at least is if you shift the pitch, if you change your pitch. Um, it doesn't, it's not smart enough to keep the note length the same. So if you change your pitch, you're actually changing the length of that whole thing. And that really, really messes with everything. So, no, not, not really. Or, or did you mean something else? Is that following you correctly there? Yeah, I mean, it would it would be pretty cool to be like, okay, I'm just going to export note A and then have FMOD handle everything else. Like if I want to shift to note B, it's super easy to just change the pitch, but it's kind of a pipe dream because there are some applications which are really good, really awesome at, at keeping, at shifting the pitch, but keeping the note length exactly the same. Ableton's one of them. Ableton has an excellent process for that, but you can't just hook your game up to Ableton. D sharp. You can re you can export everything with Ableton over and over and over, which is what I'm doing here. Oh, I, I did it again. E. Hmm. Okay.
But hopefully, hopefully this is all worth it. You know, it's like this should be this should be pretty damn cool to like be in the game and have the the melody changing when you're going through rooms or you know have a different melody play for each world seed. I'm just hoping this is all worth it. But I think it is. So far, I'm actually pretty happy with the results. Yeah, I'll be curious too, because a lot of the music in Songbringers so far, at least, is meant to be really background, so you don't, you shouldn't really be that conscious of it. So, yeah, I'll be curious to see that too. Right? How obvious? Yeah. So once I and really the most time consuming part about all this at first is is just creating the process, right? It's creating the system for creating a procedurally generated melodies. Like once I've got the system down and I know how each track should be like crafted and structured, that's gonna be it's gonna be so much easier to do the next one. Like level two will be so much easier than level one. All right, so let's create a new thing. Maybe we could just leave it as a base. Yeah, maybe I can duplicate this event. Take base one. Actually, we'll call this now chirpy. Chirpy zero. People will notice if it's not there. Yes, that's true. Kira Lore. Isn't that funny? Isn't it funny how sometimes people notice things that are missing, but they don't notice things that are there? So I'm adding a track. This is going to be Chirpy Zero. Chirpy Zero. Let's drag it in to level one. And create, make it a nested event, convert to nested event. We delete this original chirpy. So chirpy zero, its note is going to be based on rand one. We want to yes, allow it to scale for each one of these things. And now we should be able to just drag these in and overwrite these. So over base, wait, what's, oh yeah, that's A. Okay, this is gonna be chirpy. Oops, wait, no, not there. Over here, chirpy zero A. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to have to drag these tracks out a little bit, but that's okay. Better than the weird bug I was getting earlier. Okay, A sharp. Once you finish compiling all the tracks, will you go consider changing tracks per zones? Definitely mutinous. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things I'm going to be playing with today. Is like once I get this all in place, like should the melodies really change? 
every room or should they just change every dungeon? Um, I'm pretty sure I want the keys, the root key to say the same. So for example, the dungeon root key will always be like a B for that whole dungeon, but that's still seven different notes within the key of B, which you could choose for its melodies. So, um, yeah, should they, should they actually, should they progress? Should I use the circle of fifths to progress the notes through, throughout each room? That might be actually pretty, be pretty neat. So as you go into each new room, the way that the circle of fifths works is you move up five steps in, um, in a key and it's awesome. It's almost, it almost sounds like you're elevating the sound. And if you move five steps down in the key of the circle of fifths the other way, you, um, it sounds like you're, you're descending, like you're moving down the track. So like that could be really interesting to play with the circle of fifths and also um, it's going to be really great to add drums and other thing, other really dynamic elements for when enemies are there or maybe maybe like layering up the drums too. So like when there's a lot of enemies in a room, it's going to play all the drums. And then when there's less enemies, it starts taking out little elements of the drums. And I could do other rad things like um, when you're low on health, it could maybe like make it all sound muted and like you're like the music's coming from a different room. Um, so there's a lot to play with once this is all compiled and ready to go. So it's exciting. It's actually pretty exciting. Yeah, this, the, the sound can be spatialized too. Um, FMOD has a, this effect called a 3D panner. So yeah, right, Kirillor? Totally. So I mean, there's just, once this is all in place, it's just like a candy land of awesomeness. To play around with. I'm pretty stoked. I'm actually, I'm just, I've wanted to do this for months and months, maybe a whole year. And it's just exciting to finally be doing it. Yes, oh, definitely, definitely planning to add it to the overworld too. And the overworld's unique because the overworld has four different, like, different biomes. So each one of the biomes will kind of be like a, its own separate dungeon. And that'll be interesting to be like, okay, maybe the maybe the overworld will always have happier um, keys. And maybe the dungeons will always have uh, sadder keys, like minor keys. So that'll be interesting. Oh, Rocket Bunny. The perils of game development. So, um, yeah, one of the things I was working through this week was like, okay, how should I actually structure this in, in FMOD? And um, FMOD has this thing called programmer sounds where you can load in your own sound effect. Um, but that didn't quite work out because the problem with programmer sounds was that you the only way to reload your, your, uh, your song or whatever, your event, is to, or I mean, yeah, to get it to load different notes is to restart the event which would cause it to clip i tried this i'm like damn it you can't there's no other way to load programmer sound so really the only way to do this is to do these sub events or whatever this is a sub event for just playing this one track of the song it has to have 12 different tracks that are all triggered via the parameter but anyways this was just kind of a tech technical note Waterfall could rustle, right? Yeah. Things can pan too, like overall, FMOD is some pretty some pretty rad software. One of these minutes, I'll show you guys the the profiler. You can actually profile your audio, and it's pretty awesome. It shows you exactly how much CPU your your track is using your your event. Um, down to each individual audio track, how many voices each audio track's using. The concept of FMOD is, is really good. And the implementation's pretty good too. I just went it, ran into that one little bug today. So, but bug solved. Okay, there we've got all these chirpy sounds hooked up into this chirpy sub event based on rand one. Let's see if we got that working. So 
Yeah. Good. Now let's get, um, let's duplicate that. Well, yeah, we're going to need to create a different event because I want to do chirpy zero and a chirpy one. Chirpy one will just be based on a different random number. So I guess we just add a new audio track, call this chirpy one. Duplicate this, drag it in. Wait, let's call this trippy one first. But the one little thing is we shipped it like that. So chirpy one plays right after chirpy zero. And then chirpy one, we want to convert to a nested element, delete this original one. One man orchestra. What's up, Zyger? Okay, so Chirpy One needs to be based on RAN2. Luckily, FMOD's got this rad little feature where if you go, if you change a parameter, you can allow it to scale or whatever, which changes all these little things. So I wouldn't have to go in and change this and that 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 and that, and that. It does it all for you. That's pretty cool. Let's we'll see if that's the right timing. Yes. Okay, so it's playing the... It's playing note A for every single track right now, but once we put it in the game, it'll start using different random numbers. We could even base chirpy one on ran three, which is the third note. Let's hear this in the game now. Clock, what's up, man? Another neat thing about FMOD is that once you've built it once, it caches your stuff, so the next time I build this, it'll be fast. So now, now when we're in here, we should hear some chirpy sounds, and they should also be in the key of the song. Yeah, procedural audio. It's really just procedural melody. It's not really, it's not procedural rhythm. Why is it playing the same note? For chirpy. That was weird timing on its transition there, but I can work on that. Okay, it's playing exactly the same chirpy sound each time. Why is that? Chirpy zero is using rand one. Chirpy one's using rand Wow. Nice job, Rocket Bunny. It's pretty cool. It's a rad screenshot. Oh man, not not one of one of these weird bugs where I don't understand why it's playing not playing the right note. It's based on RAN2. My first instinct is to restart FMOD Studio. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work, though. Re-export? Shit, I don't know. Okay, let's just try the bases. basics. Rebuild. Restart. Restart the computer. Restart the stream. Restart society. Uh, 
Oh, you know what? I should try something really basic. Like if I go ran two, one, we should be playing the second note for chirpy. Oh, wait, wait. There, there it is. Ran two. Is, uh, has the wrong maximum here. Oh my god, that was messing up all these melodies. Are you kidding me? Was that really like that? Ran 1 was okay, but Ran 2 was only 0 or 1. Oh my god, I'm really glad I found that. Oh, it was. Ran, three, ran 2 was totally borked. Wow, this is going to be like a new world for this whole procedural melody thing. Okay, yeah, ran two is correct there. Ran one is correct there. Ran two is correct there. Oh, man, so glad I found that. Oh, my God. That was messing up the, everything, even the bass. Okay, so if I turn ran two now to one... We should hear two different notes. Yay! Cool, so what you're hearing there is A and A sharp. Awesome, rebuild. Oh, this is awesome, I can't wait to hear it now. Nice, Papu. I didn't know Papu had long stream. Yeah! Chirpy, you're playing the right notes now. Oh, this is sounding good. And once again, that transition is not happening exactly right there for between the two different kinds of notes. One obvious way to fix that is to not even make it transition its notes, just to keep the notes different when you go to a different dungeon. Uh, but I think I can make it so it just times that perfectly where it changes the notes right after the song is finished. Oh my god! So earlier in the stream I was like, oh, this, this, this whole melody right here is really minor key. It's not sounding very happy at all. The problem was that Ran 2 was playing the exact- it was only had two notes to choose from. So this was- this is a lot better. This is B and C sharp. Party's over. <laughs> I kind of like how it changes its notes as you go from different room to different room. If it just if it just transitioned a little bit better, it's kind of a train wreck how it transitions right now. It's like the music volume needs to be louder. That's a little too loud, I guess. those both how they were five and five so you make the music a little louder oh this is so great it's starting to get how this song should be um some next steps i need to take are to add drums based on how many enemies are in the screen and um and play and getting the transitions to sound just right so as it transitions from room to room it needs to just 
set its parameters at exactly the right moment so that it doesn't sound like there's any switch at all. It just sounds natural. Um, those are two. Those are two things on my mind right now. But other than that, I kind of gotta get. I gotta take a break now from streaming, guys. That's gonna be it for today's stream. So I'm gonna check in today. This stuff. This is pretty cool. This is actually a really big steps made today. I got level one's music. So far, this is all of level one's. Well, not quite all of level one. There's one more track I have. Um. To, with a few more sounds. Let's hear that really quick. Before I go, we'll play this. There's, I think there's... Yeah, so this one has a different chirpy sound. And then there's one other sub sound. This I'll be putting in there too. And then drums and stuff like that, so yeah. So cheers everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Always, always, as usual, thank you for your support.